Good morning and welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Lent. My name is Pastor Jason Chestnut, and on behalf of the whole community of Agnes Day, I would like to thank you for being part of this worship service today. Our building may be closed, but the church is open. You can download a worship bulletin with the order of service from the link in the video description below. Before we begin our worship, we, can take, we take a moment to share prayer concerns from our community. I'll invite you to share any prayer concerns you may have in the chat or comments, being mindful of privacy in this public space. Who do we remember in prayer today? You may turn to your bulletin as we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Moses' account of the beginnings. 
God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is my sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood that destroys all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all the flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Peter's letters to the Jewish believers throughout Asia Minor, the third chapter of the first letter. Christ also suffered from sin once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism with this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of the dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and the powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The earliest Christians didn't read the biblical stories. They heard them or they told them themselves. They learned them by heart and told them out loud to others. We've kind of lost that in this literate age, although as we shift to a digital age, 
some of these aspects might be coming back. But I'm going to be telling the story today, so it won't look exactly like it looks in your bulletin. I'm using both the New Revised Standard Version, um, the Common English Bible, and then a little bit of my own translation. So um, I just wanted you to, to recognize that beforehand if you're following along. And um, we will hear pieces of this in my sermon as well. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. About this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens ripped open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You're my boy, whom I dearly love. I delighted in choosing you. And immediately the Spirit, the dove, forced Jesus into the wilderness. He was there for 40 days, tempted by Ha Satan, the tempter. And he was with wild animals and angels took care of him. And after John was arrested, Jesus returned to the Galilee, proclaiming God's good news, gospel, and saying, the time is now. The empire that God brings is coming. Change your hearts. Change your lives. Trust that this is good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 1851, the last decade before the American Civil War. The frontier city of Akron witnesses a woman walk in with the air of a queen up the aisle at that year's Ohio Women's Rights Convention. Her name given at birth was Isabella Bomfrey, but her birth was into slavery. After she escaped at 28 from captivity with her infant daughter in tow, she changed it, explaining later that God had told her to leave the city and go into the countryside, quote, testifying the hope that was in her. At the Women's Rights Convention, this woman who had escaped the evils of chattel slavery, this woman who had managed to stay alive in a country committed to enslaving her again, this tall, thin black woman stood up in the midst of a sea of white faces, a few of whom tried to shout her down, who were both uninterested in what she had to say and focused on white men agitating at the same time. It was into this melee that she stood up and gave an extemporaneous speech that would prove her most famous. Ain't I a woman? She said, I can outwork, out-eat, outlast any man. Ain't I a woman? The historian Ibram Kendi describes what happens next. As she returned to her seat, she couldn't help but see the, quote, streaming eyes and hearts beating with gratitude from the women, the muddled days from the men. She imparted a double blow with her speech, an attack on the sexist ideas of the male disruptors and an attack on the racist ideas of females trying to banish her. Ain't I a woman? In all of my strength and power and tenderness and intelligence, ain't I a woman? In all of my dark skin? Never again would anyone enfold more seamlessly the dual challenge of anti-racist feminism. The speaker's name was now and would be for the rest of her life, Sojourner Truth. Consider that name for a second, Sojourner Truth. Lent is a season that relies heavily on both of these concepts, a time when we become a sojourner in the footsteps of Jesus, a time when we seek a truth that Jesus tells us will set us free. A time when we walk our own wilderness journeys. A time when we, like truth herself, testify to the hope that is within us. 
On that day more than a century and a half ago, I can imagine that for much of her white audience, my ancestors, Sojourner Truth's presence and proclamation both confounded and terrified them, while maybe even showing the promise of a new world, if they could only see it. The Holy Spirit led Sojourner Truth into the wilderness, but it didn't keep her there. That same Holy Spirit takes center stage in our gospel story today, and she is in charge, y'all. In the space of two verses, the Spirit as a dove somewhat calmly announces a terrifying voice from the sky, a voice that brings words of comfort to be sure, but still a voice coming from the sky. And then the Spirit is a wild mystery, physically dragging Jesus on his baptismal day and dropping him somewhere in the desert, no man's land, cut off from anyone and anything, what the prophets called the wilderness. That was in two verses. That shift. Historically, we Lutherans tend to focus less on the Spirit than many of our denominational siblings. And I believe that's to our loss. In Mark, the shortest and barest gospel we have, we see an immediate and astonishing trajectory driven by this weird, enigmatic, complicated, multifaceted third person of the Trinity in my grandfather's 20th century Catholic tongue, the Holy Ghost. Today, the Spirit is certainly ghost-like, morphing with ease from a fluttering dove, the picture of peace, we release doves to celebrate. They seem very peaceful as they head up into the sky. To a shadowy figure, willing and able to force Jesus into the wilderness at a moment's notice. Immediately, Mark says. And not just for a few nights either, but for almost six weeks. The Spirit comes back for a third act in this short lesson, though Mark doesn't explicitly say so. After John was arrested, Jesus returned to the Galilee, proclaiming God's good news, gospel. Don't sleep on that first part. John was arrested. After John was arrested. John was arrested by the powers that be for speaking the truth. A gift given to Jesus and Sojourner and the rest of us. And that arrest of his cousin drives Jesus out of the wilderness. Where later... Aided by the same Holy Spirit, Jesus will face a similar arrest himself. Barely halfway through the first chapter of Mark, we have three major Holy Spirit job descriptions on display. Comforting us with moments, however brief, of peace. Forcing a sojourn into the wilderness, whether we're ready or not. And inspiring truth-telling regardless of the audience. Sojourner Truth didn't stop with her speech in Akron, of course. Over the next four decades, she continued her spirit-led work through the Civil War and beyond by pressing the U.S. government to provide land grants to those millions who were formerly held captive for generations, known to history as 40 Acres and a Mule, a promise for reparations for a quarter millennia of chattel slavery yet to be delivered. Now, whether or not we as Lutherans choose to focus on this same Holy Spirit, she is most certainly focused on us. The Spirit cajoles us, challenges us, empowers us, not just during Lent, but maybe it's here where we can see her most clearly. This liturgical season, this sojourn seeking the truth that pro Jesus promises us will set us free. Historically during Lent, the church has encouraged giving something up or in recent years to take something on. I think this might be, uh, I think we might be asking the wrong thing. In Lent, we are confronted with a wily, unpredictable Holy Spirit, a divine being who takes us for a ride but never leaves our side. This Spirit, 
that encounters us just as she did Jesus of Nazareth and Sojourner Truth. Today, she lovingly drives us into the wilderness of Lent and into a full Lent where we are continued, we are continuing to experience a global pandemic. She drives us into this wilderness of Lent, but she will not keep us there. The Holy Spirit led Sojourner to leave the wilderness to fight against slavery and the deeply embedded racism of this country. Jesus left the wilderness to proclaim God's kingdom come for the chains to be broken, for the enslaved to be set free. I think the question we need to ask ourselves for this Lent is, what will our sojourn look like? And where will we go after the wilderness? Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially those affected by the coronavirus. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern for the hungry through fish food bank and backpacks for kids. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died, trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves in all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to receive God's gift to us in the Eucharist, we take a moment to offer ourselves and our gifts to God's service. We offer ourselves to God in many ways, including through the ministries of this congregation. Through Agnus Day, we love and serve our faith formation programs, community service, and providing a supportive community of worship. You can help support these ministries by visiting the link in the video description below to make a one-time donation or set up a recurring gift. Thank you for your generosity and your commitment to this congregation and the community we serve. When Little Lambs was first recommended to our family, I was looking for a place for my oldest son who was so exuberant and ready to meet and take on the world. He went through Little Lambs for two and a half years and he absolutely loved it there. He was so well prepared to start kindergarten that he just breezed right in. He really enjoyed all of the activities and all of the wonderful lessons that his teachers at Little Lambs taught him. He had a great time learning about the seasons and all of the different things that Little Lambs had to offer for him. I have so many sweet memories of the traditions that Little Lambs has, the Mother's Day tea, the wonderful Christmas program, trunk or treats in the parking lot, and a trip to the pumpkin patch. When my youngest was ready to start preschool, he needed a little bit of a different approach than my oldest one. He was shy. He was not ready to let go of mom at all. And he has a speech delay. And Little Lambs worked so well with my uh, younger son. He really thrived with all of his teachers and his friends there. And he also is so ready for kindergarten and really cherishes all of the different memories and friends and teachers that he's had at Little Lambs over the years. He is so excited about kindergarten, but he is so sad and we are so sad to be done with our time at Little Lambs. I can't recommend the program highly enough. The teachers are wonderful. All of the staff at Agnes Day is wonderful. And it just has given my children a wonderful foundation for the start of their school career. I really hope you'll consider Little Lambs.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, of the journey, of the sojourn. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. You set your bow in the clouds as a sign to Noah and gave Abram and Sarai new names to seal your covenant. In the wilderness, you blessed Israel with your law, an everlasting testament to your love for them. Through grumbling and rebellion, through wilderness and exile, you remained with your people, faithful when we were faithless, until the time you sent your Son to establish a new covenant, which could not be broken, to write your law upon our hearts. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to the disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. You are with us still, faithful God. Send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us for our journey with this bread and cup, a foretaste of the feast to come when all your world will be fed at your table of justice and mercy. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with Noah, with Abraham and Sarah, with Moses and Joshua, with the prophets and martyrs of every age who have looked with the eyes of faith to see your promised deliverance, which you have made tangible in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, all honor and glory is yours, O divine beloved, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for us. This is the blood of Christ shed for us. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and preserve us in life that is abundant. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. 
Send us in the power of your Spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon us with favor and bring us peace. Amen. Before we conclude, I'd like to share a few announcements. One of them on my iPad that I put away. So I will open again. Mm -mm. Lots of different place pieces to use and keep track of. Um, starting next week, fe Saturday, February 27th, you are invited to join a socially distanced vigil for racial justice along Peacock Hill Avenue. A group of folks from Agnes Day will be gathering weekly on Saturdays at the church at 2.45 and standing on the sidewalk from 3 until 4. We made some signs declaring what we stand for, racial equality, voting rights, human dignity, and the like that are intended to be shared. Just a reminder that you can be a superhero by leaving your donations of canned soup for food backpacks for kids in the bin outside the front door of the church. Donations will be collected through February. Once again, thank you for being part of this worship service today. If you found today's service meaningful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can gather right here with Agnes Day for worship every Sunday at 9.45 a.m. I'd also like to invite you to make Agnes Day a part of your week. On Wednesday, the weekly text study will meet at 10 a.m. to look at the lessons for the coming Sunday. I went there. It was great. The Knitters Group will meet at 1.30 p.m. You can find links to these Zoom gatherings and other activities happening our, among our congregation under the Events tab on our website, Agnus Dei, A-G-N-U-S-D-E-I, Lutheran.org. Now go in peace. Shine with the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please share the peace of Christ with someone you know with a call, text, or email, or maybe somebody that's nearby in your bubble. God bless you in your week.